can be hard when you grow up. People feel you with doubt. You start thinking about what you're gonna do now. And it's do or die. Gotta make it count. So lose your worries. Let your problems go on. Until my whole body burns out. I ain't never gonna slow down. Welcome everyone, this is Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I will be your mindset coach today. And today we're gonna to be talking about true mindset mastery. Now true mindset mastery is gonna be my most recent blog. We're gonna be talking about how you can get into a true mindset away from societal norms. And this is going to be something that I know many people are going to resonate with because society can be pushing you left and right and you might not really like where society is going. There can be aspects of things you like in society, but then there are going to be many aspects that you're going to say, do I have to do it this way? And I know many younger generations, young folk are coming out and they're coming with this true mindset before the people who should already have that true mindset established. So it's very interesting when it comes to the way we grow in generations, because there comes a generation that are just going to follow all the directions, follow all the norms. And they're not going to really say anything. But then there's going to be generations that kind of say, you know what? I'm not going to do what the last generation did. Look at financial freedom, right? The FIRE movement, where they want to retire early. Yet, I mean, if you retire early, what are you going to do? But that aspect right there is just showing you how people can be so different. I talked about it in generational mindsets where we were talking about how one generation could think a certain way, another generation could think a certain way. And guess what happens at the end of it? You just have a different result. It doesn't mean that one generation is better than the next. It just means it's different. So what we're going to be talking about today, true mindset mastery, is going to be helping you step into your true mindset, the mindset that you need to get to the life that you want. All right, everyone, if you're new to the channel or podcast, please like, comment, subscribe, and share this video and or audio to help build a community of like-minded individuals. Today, we're going to be talking about TUS part 56. TUS is a tune-up series. Tune-up series are for people who have strong mindsets already. Typically, if you don't have a strong mindset, this concept or the concepts that I present in the tune-up series are going to be more difficult for a person to follow. The reason being that is you're not going to be in a place of growth. If you are a person that, let's say, is in severe depression, you have a lot of stress, anxiety, right here, you're going to be focusing on survival, not so much of finding your true self. When you're trying to find your true self, your true mindset mastery, you need to be in the best possible place because you are going to be fighting a lot of battles. It's going to feel like you're fighting uphill. You have to be in the best place possible. So if you are not in the best place, head over to RevanConcepts.com, get yourself a consultation and begin to get your mind right. And then everything else starts to fall in place typically. Now, when we start to look at these four steps of true mindset mastery, we are presented with the four steps that are number one, going to be recognizing and embracing your true mindset. Two, challenge societal standards and views. Three, define your truth through self-discovery. And four, live authentically and contribute to diversity. When we look at these four steps, we go into detail in the blog. It's going to be four steps to get yourself into true mindset mastery. And what I will say is when you're done with those steps, you still have a lot of work to do. The steps are just going to be, all right, here's the directions. Think of it as like furniture. The furniture is telling you how to put everything together, directions, and then you have to do the work yourself. Because if I just read all this, I am not in true mindset mastery. But what I will say is that it is a process. You do have to do work to get there. And most of the work is actually scary work because you do have to go against societal norms. We're going to be talking about that in just a moment. But when we look at our true mindset mastery, we're going to be looking at these four steps and they're all going to come back to you going on your unique path, on your unique journey, and for you to discover who you can be and not what the world is telling you to be. Without so much of going into each step, I just want to have a general conversation because, again, you can read all of these steps and you can say, well, this is this step and I'm going to be referring to a couple of the steps. But there is an underlining tone for the whole entire article. The underlying tone is there are societal norms 
And if you follow societal norms, you're going to be going on predetermined paths that what society says you have to do. Number one, go to school. Then after you're done with school, go to college. After you're done with college, go get a nine to five. After you get a nine to five, you retire. All right. Or after you get a nine to five, you get a family and then you retire. So there are going to be those societal norms. Is that what you want to do? Maybe you say, I don't want to go to college. I want to start a business. Okay. It's not a societal norm, yet we have normalized it. Most people, again, they're in that mindset, go to school, go to college, start a family, retire. This is life. But yet, the issue with this societal aspect is that we forget what truly brings life. What happens in our life should be amazing. Not just, oh, you know, I did this and I did this and I did that. And then all of a sudden, now I'm at the end of it. Did you truly live? Were you happy? Were you satisfied? Can you be appreciative to what you have? Do you have regret in life or do you have a sense of privilege that you got to live this life and do all the things that you have done? Most people are just in the mindset of, well, there's a lot of things that I would like to do and there's a lot of things that I know I won't do. But yet we have the ability to dare greatly. We have the ability to push ourselves to new regards and to new heights. But yet when it comes to true mindset mastery, many people are just stuck where they are. And then we look at the idea of challenging the notions of the world, because I understand it can be very difficult to fight a fight by yourself, especially when everyone else is against you. We are conditioned into this pair acceptance and this pair acknowledgement that if we, we are not doing what everyone else is doing, we are doing the wrong thing. However, we can be doing the right thing. When we're trying to go down our path, it can be the right path for us. Think of great people in the world, our Steve Jobs, our Wright brothers, our Henry Fords. We can see these people who have gone a path that can be wildly different from each other. But what I will say is that they were all inventive in their own regard to how they wanted to live life, to what they wanted to accomplish. They did accomplish great things. We can have those same accomplishments. I know sometimes people think, well, you know, I'm just a regular worker. You know, I just work at this little grocery store and this is my life. I live in a small town, you know, we're very slow paced and this is my life. Many people are stuck in their circumstance. There's nothing wrong with having a circumstance that is not the circumstance that you want in the end, but it is your choice to stay there or your choice to get out of there. And I believe it is in step three where we talk about how you define yourself because it is easy to say, okay, this is who I want to be. These are the steps I'm going to be taking. I'm going to challenge what people are telling me. But then you do have to, once you have already started that path, you have to kind of look back and see what you did. The best way I can explain this is, let's say you are a painter, a sculptor, an artist, you are going to, number one, have the vision for what you want to create. Once you have the vision, you're going to start work, whether it be painting, sculpting, whatever. Once you are on that journey of starting, eventually, at some point, you're going to stop, you're going to look. I like to watch Bob Ross. Bob Ross was an artist. He had an afro, and he was a good, soulful dude who just kind of come in there and paint. And one of the things he said was, there are no mistakes in painting. They're just happy little accidents. And again, very Mr. Rogers vibe, but he's so right. There are no mistakes. There's only lessons. And it's the same aspect with failure. There are no failures. There's only adjustments. So you can fail, but if you keep going, you keep on trying, do you truly fail? You don't. So we do have to look at the aspect of life, of our path, of our decisions, and that when we start to go down this path, it's okay if we make a mistake. It's okay if we have to look back and see what we did, or if we look back and say, you know what, I think I went the wrong way. Let me backtrack a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. Yet, societal norms are going to be saying, whatever path you're on, just keep on going. But then we find ourselves in a situation where most people are just not happy where they are. 
Most people are in careers that they don't truly love. They thought they loved them, but then they find out that they don't. So now they're unhappy in their relationship, in their career, and they're trying to find a way to get out. They're trying to find a way for them to, again, find some love and exuberance once more in life. Step three is literally saying, we do have to discover what that is for you. Because most likely at this point, especially if you're listening to this, you are going to be a person who has made some choices and who can make more choices. The issue is, are you going to make those choices? Are you going to make the changes? Sometimes people feel like they're too far down the road already. I'm too old. I just don't know it already. Spend all this money. Okay, cool. I understand that you can have a different situation. It might not be perfect. But what I can say is if you challenge whatever society is telling you, And maybe you ended up in a good place. Maybe you didn't end up in the best of places. And if you didn't end up in the best of places, how can you start to get into a better place, a better mindset? One of the best things you can do for yourself is to acknowledge that your journey is going to be unique. It's going to have ups and downs. It's going to have problems. We know it's going to have problems. But it doesn't mean that you have to be a person that just says, well, oh, well. This reminds me of a funny situation that I had with a former girlfriend of mine. She wanted to make dinner, and so she made it too salty. And what was so funny was she threw out all the food. And I was like, why'd you throw out all the food? We could have ate it. And then she's like, no, I don't want to eat salty food, or I don't want you to eat salty food. And I'm just thinking in my head, now we have no food. So it was just so funny because, I mean, I made food, but It was just so funny how you can be making something, you can have a objective, and then the objective is just like, yeah, no, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to do that. It is interesting to say the least that we can be growing towards something and we can say, okay, I'm going to do this. This is my task. This is my obligation. And then all of a sudden, guess what? Uh Uh-oh, we have an issue. Houston, we have a problem. It was something that we had control over, but we didn't control. The food was too salty, right? Our life is just not exactly where it needs to be. And sometimes that can happen where you feel like you need to throw everything out and you need to start from zero. That is an option, right? You can start from zero. You can start from scratch. The the issue with starting from scratch all the time is that you don't build. Sometimes people say, you don't start from scratch, you start from experience. And this is where true mindset mastery shines. When we fail, when we don't grow, when we challenge societal norms, when we challenge the status quo, we learn from our mistakes, we learn from other people's mistakes, and then eventually we're able to prosper more readily. The issue with what I find in many people is that they are not living true to themselves. And this is basically step four. How do you live authentic to the version of the person you want to be, right? For example, my life. If I just conformed, let's say I was still a teacher, I did everything I was told. I have to go do this, I have to go do that, I have to be this type of person, I have to get this type of house, I have to have this type of family. Okay, where would that lead me? It might be an okay life. I'm not going to lie. It's going to be an okay life. I like to think of it as men who can be bought out. For example, I know people don't like him, but Andrew Tate, Alex Jones, these men were actually given deals. Even Trump were given opportunities to be bought out. Hey, we're going to give you this much money, X, Y, Z. The only thing you have to do is just listen to us, right? This is more political stuff, right? But guess what? They don't want to sell their soul. They wanted to be true to themselves. And so what that did was it made them to be the enemy to most people. Because now they're like, oh, this person is this, this person is that. But I guarantee you, if Trump was endorsed by the Democratic Party and then he basically, they did their work to kind of consolidate everything, most people would say, oh, he's not so bad because they were told what to believe. So most people are not living true to themselves. They're living true to what they're told. This is an issue with true mindset mastery because you're not living to what you can be doing, what your capabilities are. You're only being told what you can. I saw a video the other day, and it was on LinkedIn. Someone had posted a little boy with a chicken, and the chicken was just kind of hanging out there, and the boy was trying to pick up the chicken and put the chicken on the bike. He wanted to ride with the chicken behind him. But guess what? 
The boy doesn't have a basket. He just has a one-seater bike. And he puts the chicken on the seat. And then he kind of lifts up the bike very slow, very gently. And then the chicken kind of balances himself out. And then the boy starts kind of pedaling the bike without the pedal. It's kind of walking, shimmying the bike. The issue was that if you ever told that boy, hey, you can't have a chicken ride a bike with you, like the chicken's going to fly off. The chicken is not going to allow that to happen. Most of the time, that's probably going to be the case. The issue was that no one told the boy that he couldn't do this. He believed that he could. So his mindset was, I can do this. It wasn't that I can't do it. And then guess what happened? The boy did it. The chicken stayed and he was so happy. You could see the smile on his face. And the caption said the reason why he could do this was because no one told him that he couldn't do it. Most people live life full of limits. The limits in their life are not because they're self-imposed. It's because other people in society have told them to have them. You can't do this. You can't do that. There are limits to what you can and can't do. Yeah, true mindset mastery has no limit to what you can and cannot accomplish. Because if you look at what you can do, it can be very different than what other people are doing. Sometimes people are just going to be happy with their current circumstances. As I said, their nine to five, their relationship, their job, career, whatever, whatever it be. But what I will say is we all have an opportunity to be more than what we are right now. And there are going to be things that you can do that only you can do. That you have a mindset that has moved in a way, your path, your journey, even though the destination might be very similar to other people, right? Mansion, car, fast cars, whatever. It can be very similar to other people, but how you get there is different. What you build can be a testament to what you're trying to do. Because you might be like Chanel, right? You know, Chanel came into the market and shifted the market saying, hey, you need to have this instead of what you see now. Think of, again, clothing name brand stuff. I know Kanye does a lot of weird things with his clothing line and his shoes and stuff like that. You might think, why am I going to buy jeans with holes in them? Guess what? It's it's a trend. I mean, you're basically paying top dollar for less fabric. If you have holes in your jeans, you have less fabric and you just paid more for it. But again, it's the trend. It's the style. It's what society says you have to be doing. And I mean, I I'm not going to lie. I have one pair of jeans that have holes in them, but it's not like crazy. It's just like a little thing over here by the pocket. All right. But the pocket's still intact. I can still put my phone and my change in my pocket and I won't lose anything. There are some people who I don't even think have any pockets. I don't even know how you can wear pants without pockets. Pockets are essential. When we're trying to be authentic to ourselves, we have to not have all of those holes, all of these aspirations that just kind of fall through the cracks. We have to say, this is who I'm going to be, this is how I'm going to show up, and this is how I'm going to be living my life. So all in all, TOS Part 56, the four steps to true mindset mastery, are going to be talking about the four steps to recognize and embrace your true mindset, number one. Number two is going to be challenge societal standards and views. Three, define your truth through self-discovery. And four, live authentically and contribute to diversity. Now, these four steps are going to be, as I said early on, in order for you to read, to understand. And I do want you to understand that the blog is going to be a very different journey than what we spoke about today on the podcast. Because again, when you're going through these steps, it does have to be basically quick to the point. And then when we get to the point, you do have to ask yourself, all right, now that I know everything, I can conclude what I have to do. And then you can begin to take action. But you are not going to reach true mindset mastery by simply reading and taking no action. Action is going to be necessary for true mindset mastery to occur. Then we do have to look at the aspect of, well, what is the action, right? Is the action me just being true to myself? Is the aspect of me challenging what society is telling me to do? Is the aspect of me looking at what I want in life? and then me going after it, maybe all of the above. But what I can say is that your true mindset mastery journey can be unique, and it can be very different than this article today. Because if we are trying to give you the true mindset mastery that you need to, let's say, establish yourself to reach new heights in life, 
we might have to have some trial and error. Because in a sense, most people don't know what they want. When I was younger, I was 18, 19, I thought I was going to do business finance. Cool, right? When I'm 19, 20, 21, I thought I wanted to be a teacher, right? I did all the work to do it. What I would say is I'm so happy I did it because I understand now what true mindset mastery is. It might not be what you think you should be doing, but when you are doing something, do you feel like this is the right thing? When I do my coaching, when I meet with clients, when I create blogs and articles and videos and motivational videos and podcast episodes for you, it feels right. Now, I understand that some people might think that if you start something, you should have immediate gratification. You should have a, an immediate return of investment. But sometimes that's not the case. Early on, to be honest, I don't know or I didn't know what would happen for the podcast, for my life, for the business. I mean, if we look at it, 50% of businesses fail. I'm still here five years later. Is it five years? Yeah, five years going on six. That means we are already growing. We are already doing what we need to be doing. And we are learning from our mistakes, or I'm learning from my mistakes. But every mistake that I make, I get closer to the mindset that I need, the mindset that I need right now. Because the mindset I needed when I was 20 is different than the mindset I needed when I was 30. And I know it's going to be different than the mindset I need at 40. I'm not going to be a stickler for anti-change. If I want to change, if I need to change, I'm going to change. If my life circumstance changes, whether it be relationship, career, or something happens in my life where I have to adjust, I will. It might be a journey. It might be a process. It might not be a simple fix. I understand that. But what I can say is, if I'm trying to make a difference in my life, I do have to be very clear in what I want, and I can't allow the world to dictate what I should be doing and what I should be having. If you are a person that follows blindly, if you're a person that lives in comfort and is complacent in whatever they're giving to their circumstance, start to ask yourself, is this what you truly want? And true mindset mastery is going to be leading you on that journey to the things that you want. And then it's going to be helping you get to those results. We help clients get to those results day in and day out because we understand something about the mind, and that is that the mind is powerful. If you put intention to what you want to do and to what you can do, you're going to find yourself more readily available to do the things that you're supposed to be doing, those high priority tasks. Most people are just kind of doing blanket things or on their phones or doing all the things that are meaningless. Those meaningless things are stopping you. So when you're trying to figure out what you need to do in your life, what type of mindset you need right now, you have to maybe get it down on paper. You might have to do the work to get rid of all the garbage that you have been filling your mind with. And then you're only left with what's right in front of you. And what's right in front of you should be your true mindset. And if it's not, head over to reverendconcepts.com, get yourself a consultation. We'll be more than happy to help you on that journey to true mindset mastery. Because when you reach your true mindset, you reach your true self. My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach. If you have any questions, email me coachinginsession at gmail.com. And I'll see everyone on the next episode of Coaching In Session. Until then, everyone take care.